value and implications of space exploration for humanity? Does it increase our stature or diminish it? In the year 1963, the Encyclopedia Britannica threw a compelling question into the ether. A question that sought to understand the impact of mankind's voyage into the cosmos. Among the thinkers who deliberated on this were philosopher Hannah Arendt, writer Aldous Huxley, theologian Paul Tillich, nuclear scientist Harrison Brown, and historian Herbert J. Muller. Now let's take a step back and look at our journey since the launch of the first satellite. The strides we've made are nothing short of remarkable. We've sent spacecraft to land on distant celestial bodies, we've dispatched deep space probes into the far reaches of the universe, and we've established a human presence in Earth-orbiting space stations. In addition to these pioneering feats, the number of satellites encircling our planet has grown exponentially. These satellites play a crucial role in our everyday lives. They help us navigate our world, forecast the weather, communicate across vast distances and much more. These advancements have not only extended our reach, but also reshaped our understanding of the universe and our place within it. We've peered into the distant past, discovered new celestial bodies, and even detected the faint echoes of the universe's birth. Yet with all these achievements, it's important to remember that space exploration is not an equal playing field. A handful of wealthy nations and individuals dominate this frontier, wielding a disproportionate amount of power and influence. Despite these advancements, the dominance of a few wealthy nations and individuals in space exploration remains a reality. Aldous Huxley questioned the concept of conquest. Does space exploration truly represent humanity's conquest? This query by Huxley calls us to ponder the essence of our pursuits beyond our planet. Huxley, an astute observer of society, put forth a compelling argument. He proposed that it isn't humanity as a whole that has sent emissaries into space. Instead, it is the Western urban industrial society that has been the primary driver of this venture. This notion of conquest, he suggests, might be a manifestation of a specific subset of human culture rather than a universal human endeavor. This perspective invites us to examine the landscape of space exploration. It's undeniable that a handful of wealthy nations and a select few individuals have dominated the narrative. The United States, Russia and recently China have been at the forefront with private entities like SpaceX and Blue Origin spearheading the latest wave of exploration. This dominance extends beyond just the launching of satellites and manned missions. The race to exploit lunar and asteroid resources is largely driven by these same players. The question then arises, is this a true representation of humanity's collective aspiration? Consider the diversity of our world the multitude of cultures, societies and individuals that make up humanity. How many of them have had a say in this so-called conquest? How many have had the opportunity to contribute, to influence or simply to partake? Huxley's argument urges us to reflect on the inclusivity of our space endeavors. It calls for a broader participation in the decisions that shape our future beyond Earth. After all, the cosmos belongs to all of us, not just the select few with the resources to reach it first. So let's revisit our initial question. Does space exploration truly represent humanity's conquest? Perhaps it's time to redefine what conquest means in this context. Maybe it's not about dominance or possession, but about understanding, collaboration and shared progress. Does this conquest truly represent humanity or just a select few? As we look towards the stars, this question remains more pertinent than ever. Paul Tillich believed that seeing Earth from space allowed for a demythologization of the planet. This thought-provoking statement invites us to delve into the transformative effect of our cosmic adventures on our perceptions of home, our dear planet Earth. Tillich's perspective is not simply about the technological triumphs or the accumulation of scientific data. Rather, it's about the profound shift in our worldview that comes from seeing our planet not as the center of the universe, but as one beautiful, vibrant orb floating in the vast cosmic ocean. For long, our understanding of Earth was shrouded in myths and folklore. The planet was a mystical entity, a stage for divine dramas and human sagas. But as our astronauts ventured out, the veil of mythology was lifted, replaced by the stark reality of our existence. 
The Earth was no longer a flat surface or the center of all creation, but a blue marble suspended in the void, a delicate blend of land, water, and life. This demythologization, as Tillich puts it, is not about stripping away the magic or the wonder. Quite the contrary, it's about instilling a new kind of awe, one rooted in understanding and appreciation of our planet's uniqueness and fragility. From the moon's barren landscape, our astronauts looked back at Earth, seeing it not as separate nations or divided people, but as one interconnected system, a single entity teeming with life amidst the silent expanse of space. This perspective from outside Earth has given us not just an external view, but an introspective one. It has made us rethink our place in the cosmos, our responsibilities towards our planet, and our relationship with each other. It has given us a sense of scale, a realization of our insignificance in the grand scheme of the universe, prompting a humility that's both humbling and enlightening. So as we ponder over the merits of our cosmic journeys, let's remember Tillich's words. Space exploration is not just about reaching new frontiers. It's about transcending our myths, reshaping our worldview, and awakening a deeper appreciation of our home planet. Does this new perspective enhance our understanding of our home planet? It's a question that resonates with us all as we look towards the stars, seeking answers, realizing that the journey to understand the universe is, in essence, a journey to understand ourselves. Hannah Arendt explored the relationship between science and the human senses in the context of space exploration. She contended that our venture into the vast expanse of the cosmos is not a conquest of the universe in its entirety, but rather an embodiment of our newfound ability to manage and comprehend nature from a vantage point beyond our terrestrial confines. Imagine, if you will, the Earth, not as our familiar home, but as a tiny sphere suspended in the vast black void of space. From this perspective, the conquest of space is a journey of understanding, a voyage into the very essence of what it means to be human. It is about our ability to transcend our earthly boundaries, to reach out and touch the stars, to grasp the ungraspable. It is about changing the way we perceive and interact with the world around us. Arendt's perspective challenges our traditional understanding of conquest. It's not about dominion over the cosmos, but rather about expanding our senses, our understanding, our very essence, into the universe. It is a journey of exploration, a quest for knowledge, a voyage of discovery that pushes the boundaries of what we know and where we can go. In the same vein, Arendt speculated about the future of humanity as we expand into the galaxy. She proposed a thought-provoking question. As we venture farther into space, will we become mere statistical patterns, studied as a large-scale biological process? Will our individuality, our humanity, become lost in the vastness of the cosmos? It's a sobering thought, yet it also serves as a reminder of our responsibility as we journey into space. We are not just explorers or conquerors, but stewards of the cosmos. We must venture forth with a sense of humility and respect, aware of our place in the universe and our duty to preserve and protect it. If we expand into the galaxy, will we be reduced to statistical patterns and studied as a large-scale biological process? This is not just a question for the future, but a challenge for today. As we venture into space, we must remember to carry with us the best of what it means to be human. The current rush to exploit lunar and asteroid resources and the promotion of long-termism and interplanetary expansion raises questions about the future of space exploration. Today, we see a trend towards mining celestial bodies for precious resources. This new gold rush, not limited by terrestrial boundaries, might redefine economies and power dynamics on Earth. Simultaneously, we see the rise of long-termism in space exploration. There's a growing belief that humanity's survival might hinge on expanding beyond our home planet. 